Hello again. It's been a while, and as someone who is in a very comfortable position in terms of planning of who to build next, <coughs> Kazuha. <coughs> However, someone had to pop out of my lost 50 50 pity and make me invest in them instead. Meaning I have less time to farm for Kazuha. D Luke! Oh, I can't stand him. <laughs> Where'd that come from? I never thought I'd come across. Oh? Think you can bully me? Oh. You should really bring the Knights of Pavonia. Either way, I am going to finally go after my first planned 5-star support character. Sounds good to me. What was this video about again? Kaya is the cavalry captain of the Knights of Favonius, of which he has no cavalry, and of whom he wears an eye patch for seemingly no reason. Ah. Oh, of course, his father was a pirate. Oh, and he's also the brother and foil of Diluc, but I'll talk about that later. Diluc? He was cute as a young lad, but nowadays he just seems Time to be in a world of his own. Retribution! Overall, not much fun to hang out with. I'm Batman. I'm really here to show you what it's like to be Kaya, and how to play him, and all that good fun stuff. Let's start somewhere that not everyone knows about Kaya. Kaya, according to the Kaya mains, is a bruiser. And no, he does not cause bruises, but he instead takes them and causes them. Ooh. Bruisers are generally known to be able to take beatings while dishing out a sizable chunk of damage as well. This is because of Cold-Blooded Strike, which heals Kaya every time he uses his ability. What is he, a snake now? Arg, I'm a cold-blooded snake pirate, preparing for me to strike. Not only can Kaya frequently heal himself, but he's also a very slippery dude. Like a snake. You look like a snake! Thanks to hidden strength, Kaya can give you the edge in a prolonged fight. A lot of people take for granted how much a 20% stamina reduction can keep you alive in a fight. See, in this clip, I should normally be able to dodge this Geo Bishop's attack, but oh, what's that? Ah, my stamina's gone. Uh oh. S Poop. <laughs> it really puts into perspective how much Kaya can provide as one of the starting characters. He has some of the highest sword attack multipliers in the game. He can either spec into physical or cryo damage, or, or both. He provides a team-wide buff, and he can virtually spam his abilities. Like, what is there not to love about this guy? He even helps a baby terrorist. What a great dude. Oh, I broke one of the blades on the windmill. I'm really sorry. Klee. You know the consequences. Klee. Come on, let's get moving. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. But Kaya Alberich wasn't always like this. His past was a dark one. His father abandoned him at the foot of the Ragvinder house to be picked up from the unknowing Crepus Ragvinder. Kaya's mission? to carry out the will of Conria. Crepus raised Kaya like his own son, along with Diluc Ragbinder, of whom he became the shadow of. The two brothers were great together, knowing each other like the back of their own hand. They became a great duo, fighting as a force of good, both as the dark and light sides. Until one fateful day, Crepus had died due to the use of a delusion Diluc wept. But Kaya... Kaya thought of the Conrian plan, to whom does Kaya pledge loyalty to? His family and people who raised him? Or the duty brought to him by his negligent father? That night, Kaya came clean. He told Diluc everything, of which incurred Diluc's wrath. As the moment the two clashed, visions sparked to life. Ice met flame. The two brothers gained visions, and thus were separated, and never spoke of that day again. To him, it is a reminder not of the accomplishment of giving the truth, but the reality that he has to live within a mountain of lies. Kaya? You can only trust half of what he says, at best. Let's talk about Kaya's abilities! Woo! Yeah, baby! That's what I've been waiting for! Kaya has learned to manipulate Cryo. Frost Gnaw spurts out Cryo in a cone in front of him. The little cooldown of Frost Gnaw, in combination with his passive, is where Kaya gains all his bruiseriness. In my opinion, though, I just use it to fish. And bridge. Mostly fish. Yeah, I do this normally. 
No, I don't have Klee. Kaya's burst is Glacial Waltz, and in combination with his passive Glacial Heart, you can virtually have his burst up 100% of the time. I say virtually because without his Constellation 2, which extends the burst cooldown depending on enemy kills, it will end before you can really put it back up. And speaking of constellations, I just have to quickly mention that because Kai is one of the starter characters, his constellations are insanely hard to get. Why, even just getting one feels more lucky than getting a 5-star character because they have the pity system backing them up. Man, it feels like you're winning the lottery getting him. My boy, I'd love to give you that. What do you The constellations onwards give Kaya more bruiser-like qualities by giving him a shield similar to Noel's passive and an additional 4 icicle in his burst for extra damage. And since his constellations are hard to get, many of us have Kaya at 1, 2, or at running? no constellations. Oh. And if he's in the shop, you might as well just get that. And he is damn well equipped to be your main or sub DPS. As a main DPS, Kaya can dish out considerable damage. The same holds true for a sub DPS. Either way, you're going to use one of these two sets to provide yourself with a cryo damage Kaya, or if you want to slap everyone with the sword, go for this as a physical damage Kaya. Or do both. Yeah, but I'm gonna let you research into that. <laughs> Just remember, if you want to go full cryo damage on Kaya, you should at least slap our popsicle loving boy on the team at all times. It's like your best buds. Can explain.